Hello, my name is Terry Sloat. Thank you for joining me in both my physical world as well as my imagination as I take you down my own path into the story of my art. My path has been more like a series of winding trails, often leading to surprising opportunities. I am now a landscape painter, working between my easels set up on ranches and roadsides, and the studio where I touch up paintings or begin larger pieces of work based on the studies I have done outdoors. And sometimes I have my own view from my studio into our pasture, which begs for painting. I am a pastel painter. Pastels give me a visceral pleasure that reminds me of childhood. Those pure pigments of soft pastels allow for a saturation of color unlike other mediums and sanded boards and papers allow for layering and soft distinction of edges where light meets the edges of objects. Playing with color is what gets me to the studio each morning. The path I am on now is a journey into the emotion of color and light and the patterns we see when immersed in nature. But I am also a narrative painter, a folk artist, inspired by an outdoor life of painting, hiking, where my mind can listen to the sounds of birds and drift into a more inner vision or story. So join me where my path into the arts really started, where my husband and I made our first homes over 50 years ago on the Yukon Delta in Alaska, teaching in Yupik villages, and where we found a vast land and people that we loved. In 1970, Western Alaska was still a timeless place of subsistence, small villages of people spread out over a large expanse of rivers and coastline, where there was a thin veil between animal and human spirit and between the seen and the unseen world. For five years, I taught preschool through third grade students who couldn't find themselves or their language in any of the books in the school. Because of this, a bilingual program was started in Bethel, and I was in the right place at the right time with some very basic drawing skills when another path opened up. The bilingual center needed an illustrator with teaching skills, and I took a turn and followed a path into my dream of my first art job. I was going to work with a team to create books and reading materials for children in their own native Yupik language. You might wonder how I got the job. I was hired based on a portfolio of colored pencil drawings and greeting cards I had made. I think mostly though, I was hired because there were no other illustrators within a 400 mile radius. At the Bilingual Center, we produced reading materials that reflected the environment of the children, made a set of primers and readers, and began to preserve the folklore from their culture in print. One of my first projects was to illustrate folk tales collected from Yupik elders. So using plywood, I made my first and only illustrations for a folk tale collection from these woodcuts. Working with Yupik educators, I may have illustrated over 250 books in the next seven years. It definitely improved my drawing skills. It was a thrill to see copy after copy printed on our own printer being flown out to the villages. I knew then that I wanted to be an artist who told stories, and I wanted to tell my stories in books. Long winter walks on the tundra was a daydreaming time for me, and I am still working through images and stories that began in my mind over 40 years ago. The work I did during these seven years in Bethel still resonates through much of my work now. I love to create my own folklore. It still comes from the type of daydreaming and open space that I used to do on those long winter walks or while fishing through the ice at the mouth of the river, and now at the creek at our cabin. Even though we left Alaska in 1982 and embraced this beautiful area in Northern California, I don't think I will ever leave the North behind in my heart. But I was still in love with books, so I was lucky enough to find a path into the children's book world as a writer and illustrator. My second book was a chance to work with a Yupik friend, Betty Huffman, who shared a story that she grew up with called The Eye of a Needle. From the cover came one of my first pieces of folk art, done in a palette of Siberian colors. After several more books came The Hungry Giant of the Tundra and then Dance on a Seal Skin, which is an inspired a piece called Dancing the New Baby In.
One of my biggest influences during that time was the beloved Ree Munoz, an artist from Juneau, who taught me to see the patterns and color and energy and to feel the story that she was telling. While my writing and illustration continues, I am now taking great pleasure in telling my stories on the wall and letting others create their own stories to go with those pieces. My career in children's books has opened my eyes to the wonderful art of our children, how unrestricted their imaginations are. Their minds have no rules for size or composition, only for story. I started realizing that I took great pleasure in their work and started incorporating it into my own piece for gifts to give back to their schools after I had spoken there. And then finally, into my own collection of work, which often includes a world of domed hills, large birds, small people, watermelon suns. I love to imagine what it is like in the world that we may not see. That world is filled with animals and stories of beginnings. The seal who became the first man when he fell in love with the moon's face and climbed out on the ice to be with her. A reindeer herder too old to run with the reindeer who became a snowy owl because of Raven's gift of feathers. A rabbit flying over birds saying, who needs wings? a young polar bear with an advisory council of ravens. In my studio, I am free to create the world I feel, which is more important now than ever. During these last four years of fire, politics, and social media, I've been creating a series to telling myself to slow down, to listen to my own voice, to create images that reflect the quiet strength we all hold inside, and the need we find to find our own places where we can hear ourselves think. Now during this quieter time of COVID and quarantining, my mind has turned to healing and renewal. To help my own acceptance of change, I created this piece called Renewal. As well as cherishing quiet times of renewal and thought, many of my pieces reflect my own feeling of community support. Staying afloat with the support of friends has gotten us through our own difficult but successful battle with cancer and is reflected in this piece called Keeping Watch. Community dance is a celebration of victory and survival. And together we stand is the vigilance and the community that we all need. In Moment of Lift, this is a personal celebration of the things in life that take us to a higher place. For me, it is the sound of red-winged blackbirds in the laguna and marshes where I paint. It is the wide array of colors of my pastels that are waiting to be used in my studio. Perhaps my greatest joy has been the creation of work for healing in hospitals, care facilities, and clinics, including panels for the Boston Children's Hospital, a wall mural for Lucille Packard Children's Hospital at Stanford, and art for our own Sutter Hospital, as well as many others. Thank you for allowing me to share a small part of my journey down winding paths that have often led to back doors of wonderful opportunity I don't know where this path is leading me next, but I do hope I find you there with me when our paths come together. Thank you again for joining me.